Hi guys, another tutorial here today. We're going to be looking at a very, very simple day to night uh, conversion procedure using Kaotech Retouches Pro day to night feature. So, just going to jump into Photoshop. And as you can see here, I've got a photo that's taken uh, of a balcony and it's uh, lit with a studio strobe inside. A little bit of a tip it does make your day to nights look a lot more realistic or a lot some more interesting if the actual uh, inside of the place is illuminated by a flash. As you can see here, this was shot in the middle of the day, but yet I use uh, strobes inside to, to make the place look a little bit more interesting. But just a bit of a tip if you want to be doing these in the future and want them to sort of pop a little bit more. I'd suggest throwing a, uh, a flash or two inside when you're outside and uh, yeah, it just, just gives a better overall look I find. Alright, let's jump in. So here we are with the plugin. Um, we're going to be hitting on day to night and then uh, we're going to be clicking on uh, day to night. That'll do the first sort of first process. As you can see here, it's made everything go very, very dark. And what we need to do after this is done is actually paint in the windows so that uh, the, the windows are sort of illuminated. So what I'm going to do is go back to my layer here and as you can see that's created a day to night folder with everything inside it. What I'm going to do is just drop the opacity down so I can see what I'm doing. So I've just, I've just clicked on the word opacity and slid to the left. Okay now what I'm going to do after this is click on window lighting. So that's in day to night window lighting Okay, and what that's done is that's created a uh, a layer in here with a mask that I can actually paint in. Now what I prefer to do is actually grab this particular layer and drag it above day to night. So that allows me to have a little bit more control later on. Alright, now that we're, let me just check that we're on the right layer. So here we are, this is the window layer here. What I'm going to do is just zoom in a little bit. And with the polygonal lasso so that's L and as you can see the little guy here has got sort of uh, sharp edges so if you're looking at your polygonal lasso if you long click here you see lasso and then polygonal lasso that's the one we want to be using all right so this doesn't need to be perfect at all because we can uh, we're working with a mask so we can actually paint this in later um, if we want it to look a little bit different got a little bit of furniture here that we need to get around I'm just going to be clicking around that using spacebar to move. So whenever you hold spacebar, even if you're in the middle of a selection, that'll bring up a move tool. Okay, so just going to roughly around this furniture. As you can see, I'm being pretty quick here. Double click to finish the selection. Hold shift to add to this selection because I want to get it all done in one hit. If you want to do it, uh, in multiple windows, that's fine. All right, just getting around this furniture. And as I said, it does not need to be perfect whatsoever. Hold down shift for the next window. Shift again, last window. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out. I'll show you what happens when I start painting in on this uh, on this window. Very important, make sure that you're actually painting on the mask itself. So here's the actual layer and here's the mask attached to it. So make sure you've clicked on the mask itself and you want to be painting with white. So as you can see here I'm painting with black. So if I hit D that will reset my color swatches and I'll be painting back with white. Okay, make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm just going to paint these windows in. Now, as you can see, that's made them fluorescent yellow. That's fine. We can change this later. But basically, that's giving the, the first step of the window lighting. What we need to do is add a little bit of window lighting underneath, around the furniture, on the bottom of the patio, maybe a little bit on the ceiling here. So what we can do is just click. Wherever you feel like you need a little bit more light, just click. If you want to change the opacity of, uh, of your brush, just go up, up here and just change your opacity down to maybe 40%. As, as you can see, you don't need to be super careful with it. If you want, you can press Ctrl Z and have a few more attempts. Right, so now we've got a glowing yellow inside. Now I don't like the look of this, this yellow, that's a little bit too yellow for me. So here in the layers, underneath as you can see here, there's a color overlay. Double click on that and that'll bring up some adjustment options. 
Now here you see, here's the orange that we've been using to paint over. Now if you slide this to the left, it will go more and more white. So this is orange. If I move this over, it'll go more white and more white and more white. We just want to find something roughly in the middle. Now that's a little bit too strong. I'm just going to bring it down to about 40%. Then we've got our lighting. If we go back down to day to night layer here and slide that opacity up, you see it works independently to the window lighting itself. So you can actually control how dark or how bright you'd like your ambient light to be. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's say you wanted to make this uh, a little bit darker and look a little bit more like it was shot in the middle of the night. All you'd have to do is get your day to night layer and slide that all the way to 100. You can't see anything anymore. That's not a massive problem. I'll just bring it back a little bit to 90%. I'm going to zoom in here up to the sky. Right. Now what's missing in here is probably maybe some stars. So they, these guys have actually created a new filter now, um, which lets you paint in a moon and some stars. So we can do that quite easily. What I'm going to do first is just flatten everything and click on star field one. Now what that'll do is it'll create a separate layer here called star field. What I'm going to do is just paint that in. So again, make sure you've got a white brush and literally just start painting it in. Make my brush a little bit stronger, up to 100%. As you can see, magically, stars start to appear in the sky. Let me zoom in in case you can't see that. As you can see, now we've got some stars everywhere. If you were to accidentally paint uh, over, the, say, for instance, here the ceiling and you've got stars in your ceiling, just paint in with black and uh, they'll be removed like that. Very simple. Okay, we now have stars. And we've also got a new feature, which is create a moon, which will create a ridiculously sized moon, which will just move, hold shift, Drop down to a normal sized moon. And if that's too blue for you, again, you've got all your options here. So you can change the, what color it is. If I don't like the blue, I can make it sort of uh, more of a gray. Mm, very simple. Okay, now move this near the cloud. As you can see, a cloud is never behind the moon. Um, so we'd need to just use a bit of a soft brush to, uh, to remove, oops, on the moon itself to uh, paint it away. And by brush, I mean eraser or use a layer mask and use a brush to brush it in or out. Again, we can change the opacity of the moon itself. Voila. Now for some final touches, if you wanna make it a little bit more, um, more realistic or a little bit more vibrant, if you want it to stand out a little bit more, there's a few ways you can do it. Um, one of the ways I actually like to do is to create a new layer with Control shift n or I think it's Command-Shift-N and just call it uh, so a repaint. And what I do here is use the History Brush. And the History Brush by default is actually set to be the first, um, the first option when you open your, your image. So with that selected, if you paint anything back in now, it'll paint back in what the original image was. So you can use this brush at say 10 or 20% and you can actually start painting in if you want a little bit more brightness in certain areas. So say here the, the tiles. Let's crank this up a little bit so you can get a bit more of an effect. Okay, and I can paint this in. So there's a little bit more of a glow from the, from the actual uh, apartment itself. Paint this in here, paint this in here. As you can see, there's a very strong glow happening here, which I don't want. And that's easy to do. We can actually uh, just mask that out. So we've got that there. Paint that back in. Now just gonna mask that, uh, that area out. Oh, make the brush a bit bigger. Okay, there we are. Another final touch, Control Shift A. This is bringing it into Adobe Camera Raw. Make sure you flatten your image first. Control Shift E first. 
then control shift A. Once you're in here, you've got a lot more sort of global adjustments. So I can add a little bit of dehaze with a bit of vignetting on the outside. Um, if I want, I can push my shadows a little bit, add a little bit more color to it, add a bit more contrast. You can go as crazy as you want here. Obviously, you can start adding gradients and things over it. If you wanted to go to the gradient menu and drop the exposure down a little bit, you can start you know, bringing in a, a gradient like this. It's, this is obviously thousands of options that you've got in ACR. It's a, it's a very simple to Lightroom. Click OK, and that'll apply that to your image. Voila. At the end, you're left with a lovely looking day to night image. All brought to you from Kaotech Retouches Pro, new plugin for Photoshop. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Catch you next time.